Alright everybody, I'm back after a nap. Um, quite groggy, but hopefully my blood sugar is better, but anyways. Eye contact temporarily failed him. Derek watched his own foot scuff at the spot where on the slab of wood met another. A downturned face didn't hide the wide smile across it. Thanks, Nori. Don't thank me yet. Has some fun first. Gradually, his normal confidence returned. It wasn't a mistake. He wasn't doing something wrong. He could simply enjoy himself, and he would. Okay then, if you're positive, sure. Want to get our faces painted? Gotta start the day right. You gave a big thumbs up. You definitely can't out watch. Oh, excuse me, sorry. That's a wonderful idea. Yeah, you laughed. I had a feeling you might say that. Yeah, you laughed. Woo! Uh, Derek's one and a half circle and resolutely thrust the hand ahead of him straight towards the chosen destination. I'm gonna get whatever I want. Could be anything. The sky's the limit. The cheer in his voice and the shimmer in his eyes was way better than the thrill the boardwalk could offer. You almost had to feel guilty yourself. He's done you another favor by allowing you to be the one who did him a favor. That tended to be the way it went. You weren't complaining about that particular dynamic. Hey, you getting one? You shook your head. I don't need anything. You nodded. I'll give it a try, of course. Cool. With no time to lose and a plan in mind, you and Derek went to the old face painting stand with the new artist. Welcome. I got a free spot. If you see anything you like, the painting was far less glamorous than Xavier, but no less friendly or worse at their job. If the new example photos were to be believed, they had their own flair and the strokes and choice of color. You ushered Derek into the seat. It was his day, and for once, he was going to go first after you. He appreciatedly obliged. Strutted ahead and hopped up or excuse me onto the raised chair. Derek had no embarrassment over being an adult at a face painting stall. It was nice to see. Oh, excellent. What can I get you? Derek took a polite glance at the offered styles on display, though didn't need any time to decide. How about a shooting star? Good choice. The artist wasn't simply being polite. Well, they might have been, but shouldn't if they they shouldn't, if they were. Derek beamed like a star himself. Nothing could have fit better. Taking it from point to point before his attaching a long tail. Soon Derek's cheek was emblazoned. I don't know what that word is. With a bright star streaking across his face. But they hadn't finished yet. The stall had upped its production value since you were last there. And the artist added a finishing touch of glitter to the centerpiece and painted sparkles over the, ba the basic tail. Whoa. Huh? It was a very pleasant surprise for Derek as well. He'd been sure of what he was getting and ended up with more. Hopefully that wouldn't be a pattern of things to come. Thank you. Derek shook the hand of the artisan. Or the, arti the artisan. Vigorously before bounding out of the chair to show you. Check it out. Not bad, huh? Yeah. Honestly, I thought the shooting star was the coolest. It has the most going on out of, out of any options, but it's not exactly Nico's style. You deserve a gold star. I think it's cool too. You're a great big brother. It's the perfect fit. He let out a tiny laugh only while only barely stopping himself from scratching his freshly painted cheek. You're sweet. Thanks. But he twisted on his heels and took two steps backwards. The front of the stall was clear and Derek was in the place to keep watch. Your turn. Cool. You walked under the large umbrella that covered the stall and settled into the paint-splattered seat. Hello, what can I get you? It was a question, but after some serious soul searching, you said... A football, a soccer ball, a basketball, a butterfly, a heart, I want to shoot star too, a rainbow, whiskers, and... Alright, do we want to get what he got next? A rainbow? Let's get a rainbow. Another wonderful selection for the second time, at least you and Derek. It might have been their dozenth time for the day. The painter put their talent into action. You've forgotten how tickly bris bristles felt between dr drawn over your skin. You wondered how you managed to stay still for this in the past, or how even younger kids do it. It might be because the process wasn't too long. You were an expert, Sans. Well. Oh, goodness, guys. Sorry. Well, you'd been distracted by the unusual sensation they had finished. Your rainbow was topped off with a dash of glitter and the piece was complete. You smiled into the mirror and the artist angled at you. Thank you. It's my pleasure. When you rejoined Derek outside of the stall, 
He admired the charming composition. It got a thumbs up from him. A classic. You paid the artist for the work, just you, since you were covering Derek and he certainly wasn't paying for you. And then it was back into the thick of the park. Derek was on his way and you were relieved to him, to have him, directing the course without a reminder to do so. Since we're here, we gotta ride the roller coaster. We should definitely do it, but I'm not gonna ride it out like that. Then what are we waiting for? Come on. Then what are we waiting for? Alright. Mutual thrill propelled you through the crowd, flying past the souvenir shops and food stands so fast that you could imagine yourself already on the coaster. The line was wrapped around the whole base of the coaster, but neither of you intended to give up. You could be patient for your reward. Though patient didn't mean calm, Derek restlessly bounced from heel to toe and repeatedly clasped and unclasped his hand, sometimes shaking his finger out. His behavior was more appropriate for someone about to jump into a big game they had been training all their life for. But Derek had already gone through that kind of experience for real, so it was fitting for him. The thick row of people filed forward as a, at a gradual pace. Derek shot out eager chatter when he got to move. He held on high spirits the whole while, and eventually he reached the boarding platform. Finally, the suspense of waiting to be on the ride was replaced with the anticipation of the drop. You've gotten a middle spot in the coaster, though, with a bias towards the front. It was good with Derek, and that was good with you. Together, you piled them for the ride and closed the safety bar over your laps. The check of all cars were performed as usual, and when the clear was given, the wheels cranked ahead. It pulled higher and higher to the, to the peak of the man-made wood mountain until, without a warning, the coaster careened over the other side. Derek hollered it loud enough to hear over the shouts of everyone else, plus the clattering car and your teeth clattering in your head. You zoomed through, twists and turns being jostled around like you were tossed into a tumble dryer. And then it was over. You jerked forward and the car's speed decreased significantly at the last leg. Once the car cranked to a crawl and rolled into the station, you headed across the exit onto the other side, making sure not to leave anything behind. All the fellow riders went down the path in a group. Derek was out of breath and buzzing with energy. You were in a similar taste. Pace. I don't know what that said. After ruffi ruffling his already completely tussled hair, Derek sighed happily. That was great. Yeah. He began to drift over the boards again, heading nowhere but encouraged forward the tide of park goers coming through. He grinned over at you as sweet as a mouthful of candy. What do you want to do next? Wait, no. What do I want to do next, right? Good job. It's all up to you still. Derek and you joined in with laughter, filling the park. Of course I have it. No worrying. Keep reminding you it's Derek's day. Derek's day, huh? I like the sound of that. He casts his focus up to the sky. Derek traced the edges of his jaw, using his thumb and pointer finger. It reminded you of the way Mr. Sars would stroke his beard. Thoughtfully and respectfully. Respectably. Derek was missing the facial hair, but the effect was the same. What does Derek Sars want to do? We've hit the roller coasters and the face painting stalls. I'm not... Huge on the refreshments here, honestly. They got bikes and the scooters, and you could do that almost anywhere. On top of that, time's running out before we have to leave, so he's been going somewhere and stopped himself. That was also a pattern of his. When Derek spoke again, it was quiet, wistful, more for himself than in conversation. Probably shouldn't stall any longer. That's not responsible. What? I'll tell you this time, but before I do, let's ride the Ferris wheel. Mm, okay. Now I'm intrigued. Lead the way. Is he going to ask us out? All right, let's go. Derek glanced around to get the lay of the land. You wandered far from the coaster and entirely lost touch with where you stood in the park. But your new target was the tallest structure for miles around. There was no trouble in determining a path towards it. Together you made another crossing of the boardwalk. The line for the ferris wheel wasn't as jam-packed as the first ride you'd stopped at. Far more guests could fit at a time and it was simply less of a draw to, to the high energy guests attending the park. You couldn't get on immediately, but the wait wouldn't take long. Derek's attitude standing there was in the stark contrast to how he behaved on the creeping crawl to the coaster. His feet were firm on the ground. A ride attendee got the door for both of you, and that didn't mean you couldn't add your own touch of cordialness. Please, you fairies. How oh, kind. He promptly climbed in. You carefully got up the two steps in the car after. Derek sat on the right bench, the same side he picked the last time you were there. You sat. He sat on the bench next there. He sat on the bench. We sat across. Derek held out his th he held out a thumbs up to you before turning it to the attendant. Then the employee closed the tiny elevated room. You were fully encased inside it, muffled the. I don't know what that is. So much you could not. Oh, you could believe the entire world had suddenly faded away. 
Glancing at the window showed that all was well. The car rocked forward, and you watched as the ground grew further away. You and Derek were completely unreachable today. Further, for the duration of the ride, it was only you and him. That was freeing in a way. Derek seemed to think so too because it got him to talk with that reservation. I know we didn't get all that. We didn't get to do all that much here. We're finishing up and the sun hasn't even started to set. But even still, this has been the best trip to the boardwalk I've ever had in years. He poked at a small chunk of glitter on his cheek that clumped together and was stuck out from his breast. I hope you know I really appreciate it. You're always looking out for me. You smile back at him. Yeah, I know. I feel the same way about you. You're welcome. You deserve to have someone spoil you. I'm happy to. You deserve to have someone spoil you. The first wheel continued to go around on its set. Unchanging path, always forward, never back. Even in the brightness of summer day, a shadow fell over Derek's face. Well, you succeeded in making me happy. Is it all right to ask if you had fun too? You merely shrugged. Of course. Any time with Derek is a good time. You nodded. You're a very sweet man. So like you, you chuckled. Of course. Any time with Derek is a good time. That's good to know. His gaze dropped and his voice was low, heavy with the weight of emotional strain. Thanks to you, I finally got to feel like I did when I was a kid for a little while. That means a lot. It's what I've been chasing since I got here. The big park, all dark and empty, Derek's pain, confession, the scene all flashed through your mind as words rung out, how he, held, how he had lost so much it could never get it back. Maybe that wasn't entirely true after all. The soft smile on his face was exactly the same as the boy you once knew. I remember that time you stood over at my place and we camped out in the living room. We talked about the future in our dreams. The Father's Day thing might have been more of a bombshell, but I haven't forgotten the rest of that adventure. Yeah, same. I had such a grand plan a decade ago, huh? You were a lot more practical. Now we're here and I have no idea what I'm doing. Derek pressed himself into a heavy metal wall behind the seat and slumped down. <laughs> I wonder what my 13-year-old self would have done if he called a psychic and I told him where his life would have actually gone. Maybe demand a refund. Come on, Derek. Everybody knows you're too polite to ask for your money back. You're right. But I would have thought about it. I've had... I had made a great speech in my head about how it's only fair to not have to pay for a reading like that. Derek's voice faded out, replaced by the sound of his fingers tapping against the seat. One after another, they played a rapid beat like the fluttering of a heart. So that's that there's no way to actually know what's going to happen in the future, huh? At least today was fun, a good break from having to be grown-ups. You shrugged. Ooh, I want to be a kid forever, you joke. Thanks again for letting me do this. I wonder when we'll see each other again. It was a good day. Yeah, I wonder when we'll see each other again. You did appreciate that you had the chance to come for a short trip. It didn't stop you from already looking ahead to when you could be together during another time. Whenever you want, or can anyway. Whenever? You're sure about that? Yep. It's my apartment. I'm an adult and I can say that Nori Cavern is allowed to visit all the time. He declared it proudly with the fox air of haughtiness. If the pitch had been a little higher, the statement would have been a fairly accurate imitation of Liz. Ugh. No, I did not like Liz, so. It was all more than a little silly, but the smile growing on your face stopped short of becoming full. Derek's bold-faced confidence was only pretend. Regret remained hidden behind every smile. I'm not going to be too busy for you anymore. I'd figure I'd call what my actual priorities are way later than I should have, but I did. Part of that is being someone you could actually count on again, so my door is always open. Since you've been here, I've, I've finally started to see a future I want to have. I thought about it more and more, and it keeps coming back to the same thing. I don't want to be this far away from you. That was it, all along. The entire time you've been staying with him, and even before you had actually arrived, those were the words Derek had been holding back. He didn't restrain them any longer. I was hoping to be closer to you when I lived in the next city over. <laughs> Being neighbors was my dream. I wasn't totally kidding about that. But I wasted all the years we had being at a manageable travel distance from each other. I pushed off facing you for real until I reached a perpetually moving goals post. I regret that. I still do. And I don't know if I'll ever stop pissing me off. Derek caught that. His long-held anger began to carry him. He squeezed his eyes shut and forced a shaky, though steadying exhale out. What's going on with my computer? Okay. That's not what matters, though. I can't redo the past. I've got to focus on what I can do. And what is that? I can move. I can live next to you now. We're together. The clawing darkness of the past faded under the shining hope of a better tomorrow. Why not, right? Not as if I'd be canceling any amazing plans. I gave up everything before you got here. So, this would be the best time for it. I don't have to renew my lease and the career ideas I do have to come with me. I can start somewhere else. 
or hell if you've been wa wanting to come back to this area for more than a vacation i could keep the apartment you can move in i'd be up for that or i'd be up for it either if you are we could do better for each other every day day by day for the first time, Derek had expressed the whole and honest truth of what he wanted for his life for himself. It wasn't about his family or for your own sake. You even then, Derek, but even then, Derek couldn't help pre-compromising his preferences. He doubted the appeal of his hopes to anyone other than himself. I get it if you think it'd be an overkill or you're still worried about how it'd work out. It wouldn't have to be forever. Maybe it'll last for only a year and then we'll have new plans. I'm gonna need time to figure out the long term either way. That's it. Derek's new plan, what do you think? Okay, I'd love to visit again, but I don't think it's good time. It's a good time for either of us to move. Wow, it really be alright for me to live with you? Are you kidding? I'd kill to live in that apartment. Derek, I respect what you want to do, and I don't want to stop you. One critique, you don't need to find a place you can live with me. I think it'll be perfect, I'll help you. Um, would it, would it really be alright? Alright. Oh, would it really be alright for me to live with you? That was almost too good to be true. You could be with Derek in a great place right by your family and friends. Yeah, we're right by family. Um, that's something that he's really into, and I guess something my character is really into, so. You'd hope for it yourself, and for a moment wondered why something that perfect hadn't come up before. And the next instant, you remembered why. Neither of you pictured the other feeling the same way. You imagine Derek was pursuing his sports dreams and never would have interrupted that. You saw himself as un he saw himself as unworthy of others' acceptance until an abstract level of success was obtained. But those days were behind both of you. The answer you gave and the dazzling smile it gave Derek was proof of it. Really? Whoops, didn't know he was gonna say that. You nodded with complete resolve. There wasn't any need for doubt. Absolutely, Derek Zarez. Ooh. His arms shot up. You whooped a victorious cheer. A victor, victor yeah. Unfortunately, the Ferris wheel wasn't built for that kind of celebration. His fist cracked directly against the metal ceiling of the cabin. Eh. But he laughed heartedly, shaking off the smarting of his smarting knuckles. Nothing was going to bring him down. He started to ramble off, moving logistics and preparations that needed to be made, informing the landlord that there would be another occupant. There would be another occupant was paramount, and he was positive she wouldn't mind, and you'd be able to keep that key he'd given you from the start, of course. It was dry, grown-up responsibility stuff, yet it sparked more excitement in you than any amusement park could have. Derek was able to rein in a frenzy, babbling long enough to extend a hand towards you intently. You understood what he meant by that. Are we dating? You took, another, you took a hold of one another securely and shook. Oh, deal. Wow. He slowly let you go before staring down at his hand in a wide-eyed disbelief, if, as if it wasn't his. But it was. Derek had taken his own life into that hand of his. You believed he wouldn't lose hold of it ever again. I actually did it. He scuffed. His scuffed fingers curled into a fist. Then he lifted his intense green eyes to your face. Derek had grown and he had held himself back. He had changed and he had remained himself. He's, he had developed into an adult and he should be profound. He should be proud of he should be proud of and he was still the boy you met ten years ago. It was all true at once and it made you happier than you could say. I'm feeling better about the future already. Thanks, Nori. Derek had gained genuine confidence. He trusted his own decisions now, that they were made to seek the best instead of to hide from the worst. Nothing in the world was more heartening than that. I am too, Derek. Derek satisfyingly stretched out his arms in front of him. He had learned a lesson about moving them higher. Well, I might not really know what I'm doing with my life anymore, but at least I got a nice apartment in a great location with a balcony and my favorite people all around. I'll take that as a win. You shook with the swing of your personal cabin and of laughter to Derek sh to wait what? You shook with the swing of your personal cabin and of a laughter to Derek snickered himself but clung to the piece of the prior seriousness. It is a relief though. Feeling good about sticking around here is more progress than I had a few day a few years ago. A few days ago, I don't know. And 23 is not that old. There's plenty of time left to work it out. I got a thumbs up from you. You don't need your whole life plan anyway. I absolutely agree. The world is our oyster, Derek. You got more things figured out than I do. The world is our oyster, Derek. Looks like it. You're usually right about that stuff. For the first time in his waking hours, Derek was completely at peace with himself. Your spirits had flown straight to the moon. 
like a pair of shooting stars. Though physically you were still in the gently drifting cabin and its position was on a decline, the wheels turned continued to slow until it came to a full stop. Derek's joy was replaced with utter horror in an instant. Shit. He threw himself to the to the window and pressed his face against it, but Derek could only watch it stunned with disbelief as the first of the cars unloaded lower down. The ride was coming to an end. When your cabin arrived at the bottom, you took your turn to dismount. The same attendant gestured towards the tall friend exit gate and thanked you for coming. Doing as instructed, you left the ferris wheel behind you. Derek picked up his pace, bounding with each step to get ahead. He didn't go further into the crowd. Instead, he jumped right in front of you. You pause, foot in midair, at the sudden and quite solid obstacle in your path as arms were folded, his eyes intent. Stop, Nori. Wow, it's you. We haven't seen each other in forever. Derek grinned boldly at you, curiously peer as you curiously peered at him. Would you want to ride the Ferris wheel with me? What? You blinked and put your foot down as as used as you were to the repetition in relation to the Sarez family. That one caught you off guard. Whether this was Derek's impulsive side or his secret long game planning side, you couldn't tell. Maybe a bit of both. Yeah, what a surprise. Derek chuckled self-consciously. The shock had to begin. Clear on your face. It didn't stop him. He rambled on and on without taking a breath. But honestly, I know we just did that and had a whole thing, whole, a whole big talk up there. Big talk up there. A whole big talk. But there was something else I'd plan on saying. I thought I'd be able to go over it all. Then it went so fast that I couldn't say it. Couldn't say it any other place, even though it's important. The most important. If we can do this one more time, I'll never ask for anything again. Well, I'd ask for, I'd ask you something, but it would be different. I swear. Then his entire face closed up and he finally sucked in some air through his nose. When his eyes opened, they were wide and pleading. Of course he'd have a pro puppy dog face that was in Derek's jeans. Thank you. I I'll tell you when we're in there. A brand new promise lingering in your heart, you looped around the width of the Ferris wheel to get in the line once again. When the line thinned and you reached the front, you got into another car. Derek took his usual seat on the bench to set towards the right hand side of the entrance. He gestured a hand towards the left bench asking you to sit across from him. It'd be nice if I could face you more easily, was his reasoning. This had to be serious if he needed to make an abs need to, well, needed to make absolute sure you would sit there again. But you took a spot alone on the metal panel. You have an idea where this might be going. It was nerve wracking. You have an idea where this might be going. It was thrilling. You sat quietly. I feel like I'm about to have a job interview. Whatever you want, Derek. We're gonna go with, you had an idea of where this might be going. It was thrilling. Your heart thumped hard, your stomach dipped. Were you were you on the Ferris wheel again or the roller coaster then the station made more sense for the latter? Derek didn't fill the space with chatter as you were used to. Instead he made use of the requested vantage point to watch you intently from across the small room as the rest of the cars filled with guests, each having their own story that led them into the Ferris wheel that day. In a way, you and Derek were on were only one of those thousands, nothing special at all. The attendant who let you up on the ride hadn't even seemed to realize you had been there minutes before. But in another sense, you and him meant to a great meant a great deal. You were both an irreplaceable wow, I'm sorry guys. Irreplaceable, depending on who was looking. The way he watched you with unflinching focus, it was clearly apparent which view he held. The silence was all encompassing, but the strength of his gaze kept your rapt attention. It was only once the Ferris wheel began, its slow spin without interruption, that Derek truly began what he had set out to do. He placed his hands on his sides, fanning his fingers across the bench for balance, and he leaned in towards you, physically showing how he was ready to open up. Before anything, I want to thank you. Derek Day was awesome, and you're awesome for doing that. Derek was happy and bright, grinning as, grinning as you always pictured him in your mind. It was difficult to imagine him as overly serious, even when you'd seen it in person seconds before. But it's not even just that. Today isn't the half of it. Doing chores and running errands, making me feel so much less shitty about how I quit. And I can also mention real quick how cool it was that you cared about me and what I was thinking instead of pointing out I was irresponsible or wasted such a great opportunity. That was a big deal to me. But the smaller things mattered too. You stayed up even later to help me when I absolutely had to put those groceries away right then. You insisted on helping me put together the game stuff when you didn't have to. He laughed without reservation, talking talking about you had a way of bringing out his boyish enthusiasm. Then on top of all of that, 
They're good to my family too, even when we get dramatic and have our issues. They're a major, they're a major part of my life, always will be. So seeing how you got along with them is well, let's just say it tips the scales for this even more. A special something danced inside his bright green eyes. It was as if he had realized himself for the first time when he was at what he was actually doing. Hello. I don't want to leave anything out, but I should get to the point. I'd die of embarrassment if I ran out of time again. Derek's wink made you crack a smile. He had a way of bringing out a pure joy in you too. But his expression soon shifted. Derek put his game face on. It's gotta be now. His face. His voice was low, dangerously close to inaudible. You didn't want to miss any of it. Nori, my dream hasn't changed. My actual dream, not the dream of being the best at some sport, so I didn't feel like a failure. I mean the one I told you about right here almost ten years ago. That evening came back to you in an instant. It was the first time you had rolled this Ferris wheel. You had a very similar view then. Derek had been right where he sat now, but so much smaller and with his baby brother asleep in his lap. The sunlight had been fading, shadows pressed in around you, and Derek whispered his hidden hope while you were almost all alone, picturing that scene reliving the words he had said. The first drop of the roller coaster inside you was coming. Derek had no idea what was going on with your thoughts, or if he did, he wasn't letting it psych him out. He was someone who did what he set his mind to do, and his determination was resolute. It's always been what I really wanted. Even when I was pretending it wasn't I wanted, I wanted, I still want. Someone on my side who's there for me as much as I'm there for them. A partner in life. Though honestly, that wasn't the whole dream. There was one extra part of it. It wasn't just someone I wanted. It was you. That's why I told you about it and not somebody else. The muscles in his leg tensed as he pressed his sneakers heavily against the immovable floor. There was nowhere to go and that was the only reason he stayed in his seat. So instead, he used the energy to pull his radiating emotions into a single point and put th that into words. I couldn't admit what I felt then, but not anymore. So for once in all, I'm going to say what I've always thought. Derek's premeditated positioning came into full effect as he stared you down straight on. I want to be your boyfriend, Nori. I want us to be on a team to face problems together, to be there for each other. And you can do with that as you want. Then Derek let out a sigh and slumped into his seat. How'd you react? He didn't know, but he has already accomplished something for himself simply by having the courage to tell you. <laughs> I'm really, really sorry, Derek. That was it. You took his hand in yours. That was it. You hugged him. That was it. You kissed him. That was it. You went over and sat right next to him. That was it. You met his... We're gonna kiss him. It's been long enough. That was it. You kissed him. The distance wasn't needed anymore. You broke the cardinal rule of the theme parks. Don't get up from your seat while the ride was in motion. Your feet were unsteady in the dangling cabin, but your nerves were even. After a couple of hunched over semi-waddling steps, oh wow. You dropped onto Derek, landing your lips onto him. His skin heated up, tingling goosebumps. You pushed yourself off and glanced down at him after a wonderful moment together. He managed to help you get into an actual seat on the bench. Alright, so that definitely means what I think it means. Derek spoke with incredulous awe. I don't know how to say that. As obvious as it was to the both of you, it didn't seem possible. The old feelings you'd held on a since the original day at the boardwalk, and even before that, were as alive as ever. I can't think of anything better than being there for you and having you there with me. Better late than never, I'll take it. Derek, you're a wonderful man, you deserve the world. Yes, it does. I want to be your girlfriend, Derek Sarras. I want to be with you. I want to be your girlfriend, Derek Sarras. Those words froze Derek solid. He stopped breathing. He didn't blink in, this, in the stasis lasted long enough for you to worry over his oxygen levels. Also, that was my chair, if you heard that, my bad. His face might have been blue under all that, under all the red cheeks. A deep breath through a crooked grin was what finally broke his rock-solid features. An unexpected perk of picking this spot is that I can't get up and spin around for 10 minutes. That wouldn't have been a great reaction, but probably exactly what I would have done if I could. Yeah, I'm glad you didn't do that. You laughed, you're too cute. You sighed with equal parts of affection and long suffering. You gave his leg an understanding pat. I could go for a run myself right now. This is exactly like you. Uh, we're going to say you're too cute. He let out a shaking breath, completing the process of breathing only once over an entire minute. Well, since a nice jog around the boardwalk is out of the equation, I'll have to do something else. His eyes were alight. For one example, I could kiss you. I'm sorry, that's not something I really want. You open your arms for a hug instead. How about a hug? You nodded rapidly. That works. I like that. That works. 
He took your hand in his without hesitation. You gripped him back and leaned closer. He met you halfway. Your lips touched first slightly, then with more confidence. His were pulled up at the end the entire time. The first you'd kissed Derek was only a minute ago. It had been your way to tell Derek that you wanted to be his and for him to be yours. It was so important, but this one, a reciprocal kiss born of mutual affection, was the very best you would experience. However, you had a feeling there'd be many chances to outdo it in the days, weeks, and years to come. In the thrill of the moment, Derek's excitement got the better of him. His legs kicked up and he smacked his heels down against the bottom panel of the seat. A clattering sound vibrated in the tiny metal room, and it reminded you of the precariousness of your positions. Derek got the same wake-up call. You were still in the middle of a Ferris wheel ride, and bouncing off the walls wouldn't be the best plan. Whoa! He pulled your mouth apart, keeping you squeezed against his chest, and glanced around wide-eyed to check the situation. Then he giggled joy joyfully, no less carefree. I take it back. This wasn't a convenient place for a confession at all. If I really was as good as preparing as I claim, I had to pick somewhere that wouldn't rock if you moved around, and one that didn't have a 10-minute time limit. We both laughed, and Derek shook his head at the whole thing. Oh well, it was unavoidable. It was? Yeah. The cabin you were in was once again looked up, looked over up and down, but Derek's motivation was different. He wasn't checking for damage or to see if he was about to knock you both out of the sky. He was nostalgically drinking in the scene he had found himself in. Honestly, it's pretty embarrassing, but I didn't want to ask you out any place other than here. Or really, I didn't think I'd have the fortitude in a different location. Pretty scenic, right? And mainly, it's the place where I started seriously imagining my future to be with you. Nico was there, so I couldn't ask you if you liked someone or tell you what I was thinking. It had to be said a different day. But it was here when it happened in my head, and I promised myself that it was the two of us ever ended up truly alone in the Ferris wheel. I'd spit it out before the ride was over. It was a secret deal I made with myself. It never happened until now, partly because going out of the boardwalk isn't exactly practical. It's even further away than the water park, so it never came up. <laughs> The other half of it is because I was avoiding this exact set of circumstances. I avoided all ferris wheels everywhere. If it came to this, I'd have to break my vow or actually do it. And the joke here is, after all, I still didn't get to the first time. We had to go into it twice. Few more soften into endearment and chuckles faded into gentle whispers. But we made it. Through all the years and all the miles between us, we got back here. I think that counts for something. It does. It was a beautiful sentiment. Though of course he was Derek Sarez, so his childish spirit couldn't stay quiet for long. And I did do it, and now we're together. Woo! Oh wait, there's one final there's one final final thing we should probably talk about or talk about again really. Do you want to stay in the place you have for now? Wait, do you want to stay in the place you Would moving be moving too fast? Now we're in a different kind of relationship than we were a few minutes ago when that was decided. You shook your head at his words, you nod along with his caution. I I like to think about more. Hmm. Let's worry about that later down the road. Oh, I still want to do it. No, it wouldn't. I want to do it fast. Ah, I would still want to do it. I want to be close to you. We've got a deal again there still. Whatever. We got it. Thanks, Derek. You shifted and snuggled to get into an angle that optimized closeness and comfort. Derek linked his restless legs with yours to keep them content with something other than wild buck bucking. A freshly made couple enjoyed the comfort of each other's presence and bliss, though not for long. The ride once again came to its end much too fast for Derek's taste. He sighed with a great tragedy at first, as the passengers began to dismount lower on the wheel. You were of the same mind, staying on cloud nine with Derek for many more revolutions would have been perfectly welcome. When your car was at the bottom, you and Derek returned to the earth side by side as you had left it. However, nothing was the same. The world was an entire different place now. Free from the metal cage that kept him restrained, Derek leapt and high-fived the tall decorative gate over the exit. Merrymaking wasn't entirely out of place there, but it was still so brazen it made some guests stare. He didn't care. How could he? His future had changed in an instant. A dream that belonged to you both had come true. Derek didn't know what to do with himself, until suddenly he used the same hand that hit the gate to clap across his own forehead. Oh, shit. It's getting late. The first ride was supposed to be the final stop. We got the whole drive back. I swear I instantly stopped being responsible, don't whenever you're involved. It's okay, I'm glad you asked me to, to ride again. That's, it makes me happy too, but we should head out. I can't make you miss saying goodbye to everyone else, just for me. Together, you bounded across the boardwalk one last time. Knowing Derek wouldn't fall out of your reach when it was time for you to go, carried, your, carried you ahead fearlessly. Soon you were packed into Derek's car and on the long trip home. 
to truly your home after having made the most of the afternoon you got. On the long drive back from the park, there were moments of conversation and of quiet, of reminiscing about the past and imaginations of the future. Of course, now upcoming move was a major source of discussion. You determined it would be best to tell other people once the details were figured out. You decided to announce it to everyone while they were all together. Yeah, fuck it. The decision had been made, so there was no reason to hide it. Sitting in the passenger seat over those hours, you sometimes felt as if you hadn't left the Ferris wheel cabin in the sky. The atmosphere of Derek's car had a similar way about it that made you feel disconnected from the rest of the world. No one else could really reach you or him, and you could say anything there. But there was a major difference. The peace and comfortable stasis was only an illusion. You weren't on the slow, unchanging path of that park ride. Derek was speeding down the California highway in a race against time. There was a party at the end of the road, and Derek was never one to be late. When he finally pulled into the apartment complex parking lot, the car was silent. Its leg of the relay was over, and the frantic whirl, the whir, and rush had to be carried on with your own flesh and bones. Not a moment was wasted snatching up the few belongings you had brought along and booking it towards the building. You passed no one in the halls. Derek had his key in hand already prepared to unlock the door, and when that was swung open, you saw the living room you'd grown so accustomed to empty. The space was untouched since you had left early that morning, at least as far as you could remember, but Derek didn't celebrate an early victory. He put a finger to his lips and made a show of checking behind the couch and around the kitchen counter just to make sure his family hadn't used their spare key to prepare another surprise. He trailed behind Derek step for step as he dramatically skulked about his own house. He had checked him around a corner and you would try to get a look over his broad shoulders to see too. Nicholas and Liz could absolutely not be trusted if they came by the apartment and found you and Derek gone. They would almost certainly play the same joke twice. However, they had, hadn't got the chance. Derek stood tall and concluded his inspection with a revelation. We done it. No one is here. We spent the whole day out and still beat them. With a cheer, he... Wow. He fully relished... Relished? Relished the victory now that it was truly assured. The boardwalk finally telling Nori what actually felt being on time and getting to see the family before the day's over. Things really are going my way, huh? It's perfect. Derek saying the day was perfect made it so for you. After a lifetime of compromises and sacrifices, you were proud to see him get exactly what he wanted. And it was more than a little thrilling that the significant part of what he wanted was you. You sighed contently over a job well done. Derek Day should be a national holiday. You deserve to be spoiled too sometimes. I feel the same way. It couldn't have gone better. I'm so glad. Um, I feel the same way. It couldn't have gone better. Yeah. His voice was gentle. His gaze soft with affection. But as Derek came near to you, the warmth shot up too sultry. With a single spark, it would burst. Sure, it's only been a few hours, but you're a great girlfriend. I hope you know. I mean, but we know known each other forever, so... You couldn't look away from his fixed gaze. But became incredibly aware of his fingers trailing you down your arm. Ooh. Liz had been so certain none of the Sara's men could woo anyone. She would have had to eat those words if she ever saw Derek truly put his mind to it. He smiled at his words. Though, took a step back to regain your space. Thank you. I wonder when everyone's going to get here. It's my pleasure. In fact, I'd be happy to do more. Are you certain it's perfect? There's nothing else that'd be good? Thanks. Is there anything else you might like from your great girlfriend? Um... It's my pleasure. In fact, I'd like to do more. Ooh. It was only fair to flirt back a little with how strong he was coming on, yet the reply made his lip quirk. He, doubt he doubted his ears and nearly lost his composure. When he didn't do... What he didn't do was quit. He didn't tell himself or you he was wrong or that there was a mistake either. Instead, Derek held up his coy smile with the confidence he'd managed to store away for emergencies and indulge in further romantic pursuits. Honestly, right now, all I really want is to be alone with you. Ooh. Once again, he closed in on you. This time, until you were near enough that your nose was almost touched. It's pretty convenient we got the place to ourselves for a minute, huh? Oh. Oh, truthfully, I think we should stay focused. We got gas coming. I, well, yes. You clasped his hand. We better make the most of it while we can. Does this mean I can finally see your bedroom? Does this mean I can finally see your bedroom? <laughs> Derek had played it very cool, but in the instant he lit right up a glow from head to toe. Oh, definitely. This is the right timing for the final piece of the tour. Perfect. He threaded his fingers through yours and gripped tight. The hand was steady and hot. There wasn't a trace of pre-game jitters, only excitement. Okay, but before anything else, maybe I should wipe this shooting star off my face. He snorted a laugh, like you or your mom. 
That was not exactly a romantic thing to bring up bring up now. However, it was fitting. It was fittingly practical and Derek is. You shook your head, that star suited Derek. You nodded, it was fun while it lasted. No, leave it. It's cute. Oh phew, I was worried I'd have to point that out. That would be good, thank you. Oh, you shook your head, that's the, it's no. Really? Really? You say so, and you kept and you're keeping your, the rainbow on bedding? Yes. In that case, as we are. You left the main area of the apartment behind to hide away together in the very back corner. The neat and simple room was very Derek. Not that you paid it much attention. You hadn't come to see if the carpets carpets matched the drip. Excuse me? He slipped both his arms under yours, wrapping you up in him. You were about, you were absolutely ready to pounce on this man. Whatever Derek wanted, you would be more than happy with. You were a bundle of nerves with excitement when over the shyness. You were so cozy like that, you didn't need anything else. Um, we were absolutely ready to pounce on him. Sliding a hand down to the bottom of your spine, Derek kept you steady as he had led both of you onto the edge of his bed. He sat comfortably on the mattress with you straddling his lap. Neither of you had any plans of untangling from each other. The position on your knees gave a long gone vantage point. Rather than face to face, you were looking down on him as you had when both were much younger. Derek glanced up at you, your lidded eyes. A coy smile played about his face. He might have jokingly protested others eclipsing his height in the past, but he definitely wasn't complaining about the current arrangement. It suited him exactly. After you, or would I go first? What did we talk about here? <laughs> What do we, what, 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 who, what, who's, who's first, what? Both can be first. Your eager fingers grasped at his shirt. Your body felt a million degrees. He was polite even then and it was killing you. Isn't getting on top of you already a first movie joke? You leaned in, not needing to hear more. I'm not sure. Let's both go. Yes, after you. Let's both go. I like the sound of that. You did get that impression. You would have whether, you would have, you would have whether he'd say so or not, simply from the light inside his eyes. Derek was more fired up than you'd ever seen him. He cradled your head with one hand, still keeping the other on your lower back. You moved with him, easing lower until your faces could meet. He kissed you, tentative but lingering. He was making sure it was right that it was real. You were smiling at each other when it ended. There was no mistake here, only two people who once who once sung the same song. Oh, oh you pressed your hips into him? You reached under his hoodie, you compliment him, you trailed light pecks down his neck. Let's trail light pecks. Playfully, you trailed tiny kisses down his neck to the collar of his shirt, and even got in one extra by nudging the hood a bit with your nose. Derek enjoyed the indulgence as much as you did, even more a little too much. You both were so distracted, neither of you realized what was coming when he dropped his head into a happy sign to his chin squished you. Wait, until his chin squished you into his shoulder blade. Oof, I'm sorry. He snapped right back up, but still pulled you off him to check your state. Are you okay? You lovingly bit to his neck for that. Don't worry, you got me. It's pretty bad. Or I'm by his neck. He yelped as soon as your teeth took hold of the sensitive area. You win, or, it's, or is it even now? Good. Are you sure? So you're really alright? I am, the damage was done. Derek squeezed you in a tight hug. Careful with where his face went and laughed wholeheartedly. You embraced him in return, overflowing with affection for your excessively considerate boyfriend. You took a few bre you took a few breaths and calmed down. You pressed your hips into him. Kiss. Uh, we're gonna press our hips into him. Gotta put your neck into it. I'm sorry. The position you were, frankly, you, wow. The position you were in, frankly, demanded that it was too perfect. You came closer until you were up against Derek's chest and sunk lower and lower against him. Then you rocked your body into his lap. The loose gym shorts Derek had on slipped around smoothly underneath you. It was almost as if nothing at all was in the way of the sizzling friction. Oh, he's definitely a little bit different than Cove. Interesting. Derek's breath hitched and you could feel the jolt that went through him. The shock seemed so genuinely Seemed to genuinely stun Derek into mo immobility for a second there. You hit a home run with that one. Um, you reached under his hoodie. You managed to get around the folds of Derek's thick sleeveless hoodie. But before you even grazed the body underneath, Derek was leaning away. I'm sorry, are you alright? No, wait, yes, forget it. I'm sorry, it's all good. I was just thinking I could help you with that if you want. He took hold of his own signature red top and lifted it enough to expose the thin line of skin. He stopped there to check your expression. Oh. 
I think I'd rather you leave it on if that's, if that's horrible. You eagerly bobbed your head over the realization. How about let me help you? I, that's, well, okay, you're so considerate, thank you. And proceed, that would be very nice, thanks. You're welcome. Derek tugged at the fabric, pulling it over his head before lobing his shirt past you on the floor. There we go. Derek rested back against the palm of his hands, totally satisfied and leaving his front fully exposed. Pause. He held no shyness going shirtless in front of you. In fact, you were positive he had been aching for a chance to do the exact same. It would have been improper to draw attention to himself at the public water park. This was his comeback. As you were. You grabbed your dress. Not yet. You said grabbing your dress. Don't mind if I do. Don't mind if I do. You resumed the original plan and freely explored Derek's abs and pecs and everything else he put on he put on a silver platter for you. Meanwhile, Derek's focus had zeroed in on your hands revolving over him. He was transfixed by the sight of it. Clearly, that's what showing himself off to you was for. Damn, this is Derek's day. A few breath, you compliment him, you kissed again. Um you compliment him. Nothing makes me happier than you. Not in this moment. Maybe, I don't know. You are such a stud. You're so darling. You're the best. Let's say you're so darling. You cupped his cheeks as you spoke to express your feelings with more than words. Thanks. His reply had the exact amount of all shucks, bashful disbelief it would have if you said it randomly while chilling at the park, despite the fact that you were actually making out in his apartment. Derek really decided to pause while getting hot and heavy to think, wow, Nori likes me. That's amazing. It was extremely cute. Took a few breaths to calm down. That was the biggest thrill you had in you. Weren't sure when, and you had just gone to an amusement park earlier that day. You need to relax. Aiming for more of a sit over a straddle, you slid your legs over to the side and twisted on your butt. Derek kept his arms in place around you, which stopped you from falling as you got situated. Thank you. Flushed and content, you rested your cheek against Derek's shoulder. He was solid muscle from head to toe, but it wasn't an uncomfortable support in the least. Quite the opposite. Hey, it's my pleasure. Derek traced his fingers down to the length of your spine. His burning touch had changed to a soothing balm. He welcomed it, snuggling closer. For once, Derek didn't attempt to move right into a new conversation. His hands were full going up and down your back. I was okay with you. In a dreamy haze, you gladly listened to only the sound of his heart and his slow breath. And then the doorbell rang. Uh, Derek blinked wide, bleary eyes. That was definitely the door's buzzer, but you could have fooled him into thinking it was an alarm clock waking up your fantasy. Man, it's been, what, five minutes since we were preparing, and I already lost track of the time. The party thing, and we were expecting guests. Well, this time I can forgive myself for this slip up. That was a hell of a distraction. You gave your boyfriend an encouraging pat? No. Ooh, don't whoever they were... Don't whoever they are realize that they're interrupting people. You scrambled off of Derek. I forgot we had families the second you started flirting. Um, it was nice to last a while. I, we forgot we had families. Derek let out a bark of laughter, throwing his head back before promptly burying his face against you. He mumbled through a grin into the nape of your neck. Each word had his lips drag against your skin. Is it too late to cancel? Even though he was joking, he was still tempting for both of you. But it couldn't be done. Mustering his years of experience being the responsible one, Derek captured you and him onto your feet. It was time to go. He hunted down his abandoned hoodie and got it back on. Luckily for him, it still looked presentable enough, despite what it had gone through. Come on. With a refreshed pep in your steps, you and Derek said goodbye to your dreamland and returned to the world of the living, which took the form of Derek's living room. With the expectant smile that had been on Derek's face, even out into a bemused line his brain was working and then his mouth dropped open a terrible realization didn't i invite them over for dinner we don't have time to make food we could set out snacks but what kind of dinner party is that i said so that we'd have as much time as possible at the park and i wasn't considering that we'd actually need dinner shoot we don't even have enough food in the house for how many people are coming We can make this work. Oh no, I didn't either. Well, you'll figure it out. You always do simply shrug. You burst out laughing. Hey, you know what? It's fine. I got an idea. We're gonna get takeout. How about pizza? The other stuff, places like that, salad, wings, and so on. You nodded happily. That makes sense for a party, but I'll eat something here. I'd have that. Yeah, good idea. You nodded happily. I love me some pizza. I ain't gonna ever decline. I won't ever decline. Cool. 
He held out a satisfying thump thumbs up. Now we better actually answer the door. He stuck a finger forward in demonstration of where he was headed, then strolled over. His hand froze on the doorknob. Oh damn. Then he flung it open across his face. The paint. The family can't see this. Derek saves the day again. I hadn't thought of that one. The boardwalk trip was meant to be a secret, and the Derek and Derek nearly strode along to greet his and or your family with a sparkling shooting star across one cheek. And you weren't any better with the rainbow across your face. I can't believe I almost missed it, even though I had already caught that. Is there anything else I forgot today? No, that's the last one. Great. Derek was thinking fast, and he left the door closed, but shouted through the other side. Be there in a minute. Okay. You can make out Mr. Sars' voice resonating through the wall. So what was Derek's family who had come first? Derek soundlessly sidestepped away from the entrance, tiptoeing over to the carpet. Until he was certain he wouldn't be overheard, he whispered to you, Let's go, we don't want them to see something they shouldn't. That was spoken like a true criminal. He bolted from the living room, counting on you to follow you. Follow. You did. Derek went to the master bathroom and you, the guest one. You twisted the sink and assaulted the rainbow with hot water and a pale yellow hand towel until it was erased from existence. You wiped down the area as best as you could, then threw the towel into the cabinet under the sink to keep it away from prying eyes. It was stained all over, the only evidence of yours and Derek's deed. With the job done, you hastily returned to the living room. Derek came up right behind you. At the threshold, he, threshold, he bent over, leaning against his knees, and settled his heavy breathing. Then Derek bounded back up and finally edged the door, seeming upbeat and unflappable as ever. Welcome. It was such a dramatic and complete recovery, you had wondered if it was a trained skill. There might have been many days where Derek frantically put out fires in his own fluster before presenting himself before you with a big smile. Thank you. The whole Sara assembly was there, crowding the narrow space with smiles on their faces. Your own family member did not have the same kind of cheer. Her lips were curved. They were here first. You took so long answering, I found them standing around waiting. Sorry about that. Yeah. What was that about? Well... The real secret of the day was your outing at the boardwalk, but a deep red over his cheeks exposed that it was a different trice that came to Derek's mind. You and I were just going over the game plan. So, so what is the plan? We're gonna get pizza, my treat. <laughs> Thank you, my wonderful son. That's very thoughtful of you. Works for me. Derek's last minute solution had gotten full remarks. Speaking with self satisfaction of a man who winged a final exam and still, and still passed, Derek pretended that had, pretended this had gone as he had intended all along. I thought you might feel that way about it. Let's not order until everyone is here. Nori says Mr. Bob, Nori says Mrs. and Mrs. Cavern are going to show up soon. Murmurs of understanding circulated as the group filled into the apartment. Derek took on the role of the host with vigor and encouraged his guests to get comfortable. They accepted the hospitality and seats were taken all around. Wow. How was your day been? Yeah, what were you up to? Mrs. Sarah's entirely pleasant tone was followed up by the openly nosy inquiry from Nicholas. However, neither had forgotten the curious hold up at the door. We had a great afternoon and talked about some very important things. Isn't that right, Nori? As usual, when he ended up in an awkward position, Derek took the strategy of technically not lying but leaving out crucial details. Yep, that is exactly right. That's nice. Mrs. Sarah's didn't mind not getting the real answer that she knew existed. She always did. Nicholas shrugged. He wanted more, but was mature enough not to demand it. Soon, another sharp ring of the doorbell came. You and your sister perked up the most at the sound. It had to be your parents. Liz disregarded the fact that this was not her apartment and headed straight over to answer the door. You hurried to catch up with her. Liz tugged the handle and there on the other side were the soft faces of your sweet mothers. Many hellos and good to see yous were in were set in succession at the Cavern family joined with the Sara's clan in Derek's living room. It is a real party now. Not yet, there's still one thing missing. Let's talk toppings. Derek took a page out of his mother's book and offered an explanation. The newcomers who had who have wandered. We're getting pizza if that's cool with you. Yum. That is fine, sweetie. Nice. Perfect. With this size of a crowd I'd say we should get three large pizzas. A friendly round of suggestions and debates over the most ideal toppings split commerce. Most, more than one person wanted meat and veggie supreme. The Sara's parents both loved that one and had grown on their sons as they grew. Most agreed that having at least a couple simple options made sense, and Derek declared that he'd get his favorite chicken barbecue since he was the one making the order and couldn't be stopped. No one else in the group had any intention of running that for Derek. It was incredible to see him decide on something purely for himself. That's how the plan of one full meat and veggie supreme pizza, half cheese, half pepperoni pizza, and a half 
and half of a chicken barbecue is determined. You offered a suggestion for the last half. You left the last up to the rest of the group. Let's do it. How about all veggies? I'd like another half of a chicken barbecue. Extra pe pepperoni, more cheese would be a safe bet. We should get even more meat. Right, veggie supreme. Can we all get me Hawaiian Alfredo? Um, let's try the, let's try, mm, I feel like you, no. Fuck it, let's get chicken barbecue. Yeah, the rest of the room accepted your idea as well. And, who knows if you ordered something besides pizza. Um, let's get wing. Um, and garlic bread. And a salad. And that was all. Liz teased you openly in front of all your parents for making good use of his of this being Derek's tree. And Nicholas of all people felt self assured enough to joke about you being his spoiled youngest kid. That was hilarious coming from him though the most impactful blow you got came from Derek himself when he gladly owned up to the idea that he had spoiled when you wanted him to. And to top it off, Nico and George were both emboldened by your special request. Each of the younger stars boys asked their big brother for a soda, root beer for George, and an orange for Nicholas. Derek gladly accepted the request. After it was all said and done, Derek made the call to the local pizza place. He had arranged for a delivery. He glanced over the attendees once more after he finished the task. We got some time to kill. Can I get anybody a drink? It goes for you two already getting something too. You don't have to wait to hydrate. What a kind host. Some requests were made for water and seats were taken to settle in for the wait. You got comfortable on the couch yourself. Derek collected two armfuls of water bottles. He went around the room passing drinks out to each person, even those who didn't ask for one. It seemed staying refreshed was not an option. After all, it was in order. You and others near the coffee table Excuse me. got served first when he went around the dining table to catch the ones hanging out there. He was busy. He was busy and in another section of the apartment, and that's when he knew from the first for the last time you'd caught sight Derek from your position. And that's why a jolt went through your entire body, and when a low voice tickled your ear, Nori, you creakily turned into a, turned your rigid neck to glimpse behind you. Derek was there resting on his arms across the top edge of the couch. He had swung back around to you while you weren't looking. As you proceeded the situation, Derek grinned cheer cheerily. Unapologetic about the shock his move gave you, a soft thump thump could be heard in the air. It wasn't your heart, though it might have been. You guessed on the other side of the couch, he was tapping his heels together. I just want to ask if you were keeping us a secret. He didn't have to tell you what that meant. No, we shouldn't, and this, is, this would be a good chance to talk about it. Our families are both here. Besides, they can tell something is going on already. Considering the cozy position you've taken and the secret conversation we're having right in front of them. Good point. He pushed off the couch to his full height, though continued to grip the off-white fabric backside of his couch. Well, a new padding sound could be heard. Derek needed an outlet for his building excitement and found it through drumming his fingers against the cushion. While we're all together, Nori and I gotta, gotta tell y'all something. Ah, you're in a relationship. Really? Really now? Dad? What, is that wrong? We're not aware of what Derek felt about Nori? Mrs. Sara's grown loudly and hid her face in the palms of her hands. George put his hands on his hips, giving his dad a hard look. Her own parents were too sympathetic to their child's predicament to comment or laugh, though they were clearly dying to. Maybe, maybe not. We have no idea. Don't steal their thunder before they said anything. He's right. I don't know how to say that. Let them talk. Mr. Sara stroked his beard thoughtfully. Oh, sorry, oh. kids. Derek, please keep going. What did you want to say? Yeah, okay. uh, yeah, forget a word. My lips are sealed. Derek shot you a look that was both apologetic and encouraging. He turned back to the waiting eyes of his family and scratched his cheek. You wanted Derek to explain it himself. You reached over and took Derek's hand. Way to spoil it, you joked. Um, me and Derek are, you know, what Mr. Cyrus said. Okay, everyone, meet my new boyfriend, Derek Cyrus. Um, it's just, they're sorry, I guess that we're dating. Okay, we're gonna reach over and take his hand. Eric started, but when his brain caught up to what you were doing, his palms slid perfectly into place with yours. You watched his expression grow more confident. He was ready. You got it, Dad. We are dating. The soft way he confirmed that made your heart flutter in your chest. I'm more than happy to say it, even though someone else beat me too with a punch. 
The parents were instantly elated by the news. Mr. Suarez started clapping and knocked the shoulder into her husband's side. I hope that was going to be the news. This is amazing and quite a surprise, too. Mom bent forward with a chuckle and loudly snorted. Thought this might happen. Ever since Nori invited him to that soiree, remember? Ma hummed nostalgically. She reached over and threaded her fingers together with Mom's. Derek has always been quite the gentleman. George slowly shook his head off to the side. His crooked smile grew. That makes sense. You two together? It just makes sense. I'm happy for you. It just means everything to me. You blushed wordlessly. I'm glad my boyfriend comes with good in-laws. Derek's on Team Cavern now, sorry. I'm officially Team Sarah's now. Sorry, family. I promise to do my best so I dare cross my heart. Thank you so much. We're just gonna blush. I don't like any of that. The last few minutes had been embarrassing and terrifying, but you'd do it all over again in a heartbeat for Derek. You couldn't stop mentally thanking his family for their support. A bold and brass smirk hadn't left Liz's face, as to be expected from your big sister. Well, props to you, Sarez, coming up from behind. Thought you'd lost your painfully long moment when you never said anything about crushing on Nori for several years and then moved away. Your jab hit the mark, making Derek shudder one eye. His characteristic grin survived the strike. I fumbled it more than once, so I can admit that, but I did it now, and a win is a win. Right. Wow, more props. Liz couldn't completely remove the weariness that was natural to her face, but when she looked at you again, her eyes were soft. I'm also happy for you, both of you. I cannot possibly imagine how romancing Mr. Let Me Do That For You over here could blow up in your face. Liz's encouragement was a huge deal to you, but the moment wasn't complete. Nicholas had been the only one in the crowd with nothing to say for the entire event. That was strikingly uncharacteristic for the wild child. As his face was neutral, the absence of happiness worried you as much as the sadness or anger would have. Maybe more, Nicholas simply not caring seemed worse than him being upset. But you didn't need to doubt for long. In the end, he smiled. The look wasn't forced or for manner's sake. It reached his deep brown eyes. Nico's story about the night of the summer story came back to you. He knew that was coming and prepared himself for this exact moment. Now that it was here, he was happy for Derek and for you. You were so grateful. Your whole family, Sarah's and Cavern, could agree that you and Derek ought to be happy and that you should be happy together. And Derek was flushed with confidence after how well received that announcement was. He was an invincible. There is nothing to fear, so he streamrolled ahead. There's actually more major news. That at that point, he cut himself off. As excited as he was, Derek managed to hold his tongue and send a searching glance your way before saying anything more. It was understandably understandable why Derek was so pumped. You'd been busy and had two life-changing decisions made in a single afternoon. Your loved ones heard about your relationship. Next, they'd need to learn about the more. The move, my bad. You gestured a hand for Derek to go ahead. Um, you could tell them you whispered. You cleared your throat to get everyone's attention. Um, I'll handle this. Derek nodded surely and supportively. He bowed out to so the stage was yours. You cleared your throat to get everyone's attention, and you did succeed in every in getting every eye on you. You're not getting rid of me after all. Derek's gonna let me move into his apartment. The crowd gasped, then went quiet, but not for the lack of feeling. Emotion was palpable, bubbling inside a shell of self-restraint. The first to express the thoughts of the majority was Ma. You know we wouldn't want you to live your lives for our sakes, but I have to admit that I'm glad you're going to be this close. Agreed. There's no denying that this is exciting. This, Mrs. and Mr. Sarez shared similar sentiments as your parents and so did their sons. It's a smart plan for you too, I think it, and it's made a lot of other people happy. Hooray! Mm -hmm. Very nice. I don't mind having you around more. He doesn't mind. He was trying to act like a grown-up, but the gracious statement didn't do much to hide the thrill coming out of every pore. This is great. There's so many things we weren't able to do on this trip, and now we'll be able to do it any time. Nicholas played down his true feelings while George wore them openly. The oldest brother had to chuckle over the reversal. It was amazing and relieving to be welcomed home. You were more certain by your choice than ever. The wholesomeness of the moment wouldn't have been completed if it was if it was only sweet. Liz cut in with a dose of snark that made the taste perfectly right. Seriously? Sheesh. After ten years of no progress, you're gonna you're going at light speed now. She wasn't wrong. You thought the exact same thing. Well, we were just storing up all of our momentum for the right time. Now we got the means to move full speed ahead. Laughter and lighthearted conversation continued within the walls of the apartment. Everyone was ready to pitch in with the move and had suggestions to offer. And then, then everything was put on hold when, for the third time, the doorbell rang. Dinner's here. 
Nicholas made a beeline to the door, his two older brothers at his, at his heels. They gathered all the spoils from the delivery driver, gave a polite thanks, and promptly did y'all tip him, and promptly closed the apartment up again. George and Nicholas peered into a semi-opaque lid to figure out which drink was theirs, and Derek specially handed you the stuff you got for yourself. The feast was laid out on the counter, savory, steamy, and very cheesy. Derek stood between the guests and the meal to make a declaration. Alright right, everyone in my house, instead of the youngest going first, the oldest too. Ah yes, respect for our elders. How kind. All the grown-ups filled through a, as a big group at that point in their lives, determining who was truly the oldest of the old wasn't worth the trouble. When they had picked over the cream of the crop, Liz made a clean sweep of her own. You and Derek went together next, followed by George. Nicholas, Nicholas's turn came. His mouth was hooked in an amusement bin. Being last was a novelty, and he took his sweet time picking out the slices he wanted. Why not? He wasn't holding anyone up. Eventually, Nicholas selected his dinner, and the chairs around the apartment were filled with happy guests whose plates were equally full. It was a relief to see your and Derek's big announcement hadn't impacted anyone's appetite. Good food and pleasant conversation were enjoyed at the Casa Derek. Nico went back to the bo boxes for seconds and thirds without needing anyone's permission. After eating, George moved from the table to chat with Liz away from the parents. Nicholas abandoned the last bits, the last bites of his just piece of piece of pizza to scurry after his big brother. Derek stuck next to you as a rule, but there were cases when an exception was needed. Well, this is your party and Liz and Liz's, sort of, and I won't hog you. You should get to see everyone who's here to see you. I'll be around. It was true, the two families had gathered for you and your sister on the final day of your trips. On your end, the event had turned into more of a welcome party than a farewell party, but Liz was still leaving, but you didn't know for sure when you'd be able to actually move. The time you had right now wasn't to be missed. Yeah, I will, thanks. Derek took a step back with a nod and a wave. He, at least, was someone you'd certainly see again soon. You joined up with Liz, George, and Nico. You checked in on your moms. You were just, let's check in on your mom. That's not even, like, a question. Your parents remained at the dinner table, sipping on their water bottles and pretending to be nonchalant. They sent too many fervent glances between you and Liz to be convincing. Hello, sweetie. What's happening? Hi, I just wanted to see how you were doing. We're great. Oh, uh, well, we've been having a wonderful time. I know this trip was for you and Derek, but I'm so grateful Pam and I could be here a little. Ma wrapped an arm around Mom with a light chuckle. Mom leaned her head gently into her wife, and they both beamed. Times together is more important than time apart. I feel the same way. I love you, moms. I'm so glad we. I'm so glad we'll be coming back. Me too, kiddo. Absolutely. Mom brought you into an embrace along with Ma. Your parents held you tight for another minute before letting go, like Derek before them. They didn't intend to monopolize you forever. You left them to their own amazing company and drifted back towards the front of the living room. Let's go see Mr. and Mrs. Sarez. Derek's parents were contently sitting together on the couch, watching the scene of their children and friends gathered together in one place was a rare joy. But when you approached, Mr. Sars perked up from his peaceful reverie. He squished against the missus, patting the freed spot on the cushion. Mrs. Sars had to physically support her husband in the invitation by catching his shoulders, otherwise he would have toppled right over into her lap. She laughed over the dramatic infringement on her personal space. You shook your head politely. It's okay, I can stand. You took the provided seat. Thanks. We're just going to take the provided seat. After all the effort they took in order to make that available, you couldn't reject the hospitality. You popped down onto the pre-warmed cushion. Mr. Sarez looked past the man draped over her as if he was not currently attached at the hip and made eye contact with you. I hope you're enjoying your big city vacation, Nori. I definitely did. Glad to hear it. As the pleasant series... The pleasant series... Pleasant series... I don't know. I don't know how to say that. Faded off. The Sarah's spouses shared a meaningful glance with each other. The weight of the occasion hadn't been forgotten. Well, oh, we've got you here. There's something I want to say. Do you know? Greg and I met at a similar age as you and Derek, technically. That's true. Mrs. Sarah's patted her husband's leg unconsciously while the gleam of a storyteller sparked in her eyes. We attended the same high school at mm, 14 or so. Though we never landed on each other's radar until senior year. He and I shared a class here and there. We did not run into the same social circles or have similar extra extracurricular pursuits. I almost missed Derek. Can you believe that? I cannot. What would I have done with my life then? Sometimes I wonder. Perhaps you'd be living in a mansion somewhere in the hills. Is that so? It is a worse fate than I feared. The long-time couple tittered and smiled rosily over one another. Meanwhile, you leaned in closer, ears perked. The topic intrigued you. How had Derek's parents come together? 
didn't interrupt in order to ask. You knew with certainty that Mrs. Sars would explain without prompting as she did. You see, Nori, Mr. Sars is a well-meaning man, but when he gets a lot of compliments, he believes them. There's no end to how big his head can get. Derek may have mentioned this to you, but Rio, as he was called in the glory days, was on the football team. The words football team were still mocking exaggeration as though she could stop the explanation there. It was obvious of where this was going. He and all his footballer buddies had quite the egos and were such a clique. One completely random day in the cafeteria, him and his boys were acting like the gods on earth and they thought they were. They talked big and it was all crap. I spent my life tuning this whole set out, but that time, I must have been sitting closer to the noise than normal or in an unusually petty mood. Whatever the reason, I began to gab with my own friends intentionally loud enough to be overheard. I said with exaggerated, wide-eyed innocence how strange it was that the, jo the jocks acted as if they were the greatest men alive. How did they come to such a conclusion when they seemingly never spoken to a single person outside of their team? What do they know about who's better than anybody else? Holding your arms and bouncing your shoulders, Mr. S Mrs. Sarez still felt self-satisfaction over that one decades later. The team noticed me mostly to give me the stank eye, except for one, who I could only describe as befuddled. I continued on, pretending I had no idea what was happening at the next table over. We were having plenty of fun on our side of the crowd, until all my friends went dead quiet, and that got me confused. One of the football players have come over. He was built like a broad brick, though his face was anything but hardened. Too goofy and almost boyish for that. It was Rio, the linebacker, of course. He leaned over the table and said in a low, somehow booming voice, What do you think of me? Am I not great to you? Seriously? Irene and you were suddenly peers sharing a fluster over the brashness of some strange football man. He snuck a glance at the star of that scene. He was playing as naive as Mrs. Saras had all those years, listening quietly and twiddling his thumbs. Yes, I couldn't believe it. I wasn't expecting any of them to actually care about my opinion. The obvious thought would be that he was trying to intimidate me, make me take it back, but he asked with so much earnest, earnestness. I didn't even consider that possibility. I shut out instantly that I don't like you, I don't know you, but I couldn't say I wouldn't like a man simply because he was on the football team that was pathetic. Ping-ponging from shock to indigence, an outpouring of emotions reached its peak. Irene could be worked up no longer. She wasn't really a young lady recounting this for the first time. She knew the end of the tale. And despite being grown, it still put a small schoolgirl grin on her face. Well, Mr. Star is here. Had such a frown when he heard that. Truthfully, Derek's looks looks the exact same way when he gets rejected. So you likely understand the position I was in. Someone so bright and bold with a face like that isn't right. It's as if all the joy in the entire world had vanished. I looked him square in the face and said I wouldn't give him the time of day for that, but I might be willing to get to know him sometime because he was decently handsome. Of course that soothed Rayo's delicate soul and he said then we should do that. We are people who should know each other. When he grinned down at me I knew this was more than I bargained for. I'd better prepare. If he didn't forget about me, I wasn't sure I'd ever have it in me to give up on him. But so far it never came to that. And it never will. Rio had been quite the whole story. He simply needed to burst and, and, I, and I could not remember seeing Irene before that day in the lunchroom. Yet as soon as I did see her, whoops guys, I knew I wanted her to think well of me. If she didn't, I must have been doing wrong. I am thankful you approve of me so. Even though I sneak our son's extra treats and cheat with video games, I can't be mad. I can't be a bad man if Irene can look past it. Mr. Sarah's hooked the hand around his wife's. You'd bet. The grin he had on that in that moment was the same one Irene had originally fallen for. That's right, you are a good man. No buts or qualifiers went along with the praise. She wholeheartedly expressed approval of her husband. You could see it goes straight to Mr. Sarez's ego. Irene didn't take it away from him. The sweethearts were completely enamored and absorbed with one another. Yet Mrs. Sarez managed to pull her focus off the stud of her heart to address you again. It had to be serious. Thank you for listening to my self-indulgent story. What I really wanted to tell you is that I believe Derek found someone who appreciated him for who he is. The weight of those words fell over. She knew what happened with Derek and she knew that you were with him regardless of what happened with his career. As his mother, it meant a great deal to her. Welcome to the family, Nori. Honestly, I'm moving here for more than just my own family. I'm grateful I can, be, I can keep being here. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, you sniffled. Hand in hand, the two wonderful people who raised your amazing friends smiled over at you. 
you got to enjoy a little more quality time with Mr. and Sarez, Mr. and Mrs. Sarez. Eventually, they requested a moment with their eldest child, likely to share the same sentimental matters with him. That wasn't something you'd stand in the way of, and made room for two, for the two to go have a special parent to child chat. All right, we're gonna join up with Liz, George, and Nico. Nicholas, George, and Liz were gathered in a corner of the room, fully engrossed in conversation. George's hand batted in the air between the group as Nicholas jerked a finger about, What's up, you three? You were welcomed by the circle with friendly smiles. I'm just getting a cough drop, y'all. Where are my cough drops? I usually set a few out. Alright. Uh, you were welcomed by the circle with friendly smiles. George folded his arms and switched from one explanation to another. Nicholas was getting something to the effect of a recap to Liz while talking about this trip. He, reali he realized she had yet to hear about her new interesting acquaintance, so she was being filled in. Apparently, the Xavier person running some bakery used to paint faces at the boardwalk. Small world. Mm -hmm. There's no end to this odd connections you end up making with these yeah. people. Yeah, we were getting philosophical. He nodded in understanding. Yeah, it's almost as weird as meeting the dancer kid again. Um, we also connected with that psychic kid in Shiloh. That was weirder. I'm looking forward to who else will meet in the future. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm looking forward to, yeah. So am I. Hopefully one of these people will be Nova, right, George? Liz, well, probably you'll see each other at some point. Your sister was satisfied sickering into the, her palm. Besides all that, I have to say I'm surprised Nicholas was the one who reconnected with, with Xavier. When he struggled to recognize them? You know, considering the fact that he was asleep the entire day, I fell asleep after I got my face painted, thanks. I've been to that boardwalk more than once. I didn't conk out every time. Try a better tease. The dare was meant for Liz. That's what he had re readied himself for and why he spoke with boldness. <laughs> Alright. Unfortunately for Nicholas, however, it was George who took on the challenge, speaking plainly with a mischievous twinkle deep in his eyes. He knew it wasn't going to go well for his little brother. The only reason Xavier was able to recognize you out of any of us is because you're still a little kid, just taller. How's that? Nico pouted the round. That round he had no comeback. However, he did have a new strategy. Nicholas looked at you, his only potential ally, and pleaded like the child he insisted he wasn't. The irony wasn't lost on Nico. And he intentionally played to that. Nori, these two meanies are ganging up on me. Honey, you should change. You're perfect to me. It's not Nico's fault. He hit on a great style at six. Cle clearly, George and Liz haven't changed either, and I'm glad. I'm glad you haven't changed, Nico. You're the best. Well, George does have a point. Liz Nichols won. Um, it's not Nico's fault. He hit a great style at age six. Right. I'm flawless as is. Nori says so. But she said you got the same style you did at six. And you were complaining about George calling you a kid. I'll let that one pass. You, Liz, George, and Nicholas laughed together and continued to chat on the mysteries of life. None of them said this was goodbye. But when the evening wore on and you needed to move away from your sibling group, the see you shared between you meant more than usual. You worked up, you worked the room, made your rounds, and had a few minutes to yourself. You used it to think and reflect. There was a lot to consider. Life was barreling forward. Unfortunately, no inner peace or full understanding of the universe came while you zoned out into the corner. Perhaps a consolation. You were rewarded with Derek returning to you after finishing his talk with Mr. and Mrs. Sarez. He had an idea. So? Hey, you want to go out on the balcony and get some fresh air? Same as he did when he first parted ways with you, Derek pointedly left the most crucial part out of his motivation unsaid. This might be the last you had a chance to be alone together before you had to go. You nodded somberly, you gave a thumbs up. I thought you weren't going to ask me to go anywhere else ever again, okay? That sounds nice here. We're going to nod. Cool. You quietly went to the sliding glass panels at one end of the living room. Derek opened the door and leaned aside. Of course, he wouldn't go through himself, at least not first, after you. You obliged graciously in the special ritual between Derek and the people he cared for. <laughs> Thanks. The event was still alive with small pockets of conversation. You and Derek managed to slip away without notice. As soon as you walked out, a warm morning and warm evening breeze caressed your body. It carried the sharp scent of the ocean and the delicate perfume of the flowers who made their home at Derek's place. Derek ignored the only lonely chair on the veranda and rested up against the rail exactly as he did the first time. On the horizon, the sea gleamed 
like molten gold encasing a city of silver. You lingered by the door, you stood near him, you leaned against the rail. We're gonna stand near him. In that moment, it felt right. The seemingly endless expanse in front of you with nothing more than the few thin bars between you, and it was a welcome sight. With you both settled in, Derek grinned as if it was any other day, or rather because he couldn't help smiling at you no matter what the circumstances. Good job, team. This was a successful dinner party and a successful bit visit on the whole, I'd say. I had better vacations. Go team. I think so too. Here, here. It was great. Yeah, it was great. Totally. He slowly bounced one foot. The tap, tap of that was only sound between you for a time. Simply enjoyed one another's undivided company. His gaze parted from yours. He had nothing in particular to take his attention. So Derek was simply staring straight ahead. His gaze parted from yours. He had nothing in particular. Yeah. The future's looking bright, Nori. I love this city and my family. Honestly, it was, it really was missing something. Coming back to Prison Vista, knowing you were gone already, was a blow. That's patched up now. I'm so pumped you're going to be moving in. I feel like I can get off a treadmill. I feel like I could get off the treadmill for the first time in over a decade and go somewhere, possibly on a walk with my girlfriend. It was, it thrilled you to see Derek bursting with real optimism, not simply wanting and hoping that it would be okay in the face of fears, but having certainty that it would be good. You'd both embraced what was coming next with open arms. You smiled proudly at him. I think we've earned that. Here's to us. I'm looking forward to it too. That's what I like to hear. I think we've earned lit. I do too. His heavy arm wrapped around your shoulders. He curled it in, bringing you closer towards him. Then his lips were on your cheek. You turned away bashfully. You hugged him. You kissed him back. You giggled. You kissed him back. Why wouldn't we? It's, that's our man. Why, would, why, why wouldn't you kiss your man's back? Or your girl? Or your, or your partner? Derek pulled away for a moment, intending to once again plant a kiss on the side of your face, but you turned your face to catch his lips instead. He liked that one. Derek leaned into you and rubbed your back lovingly. It was lovely and precious and much too short. You sighed contentedly. Hey, your parents told me the story of how they got together. Oh yeah, the lunch room, the showdown, pretty funny, huh? My dad told me he loved to remind the rest of the team how Irene may not like footballers, but she did like him. You're so different from your dad, I can't even imagine you with an ego. You really are a lot like your dad, you both are so earnest, very cute. Yeah, he is like the father. He's not as, like, egotistical, not in, like, a bad way. Well, arrogantly. They both aren't arrogant, at least not, not what I'm picking up from. But who am I to say? You think? Thanks. You know, if I ever had a team again, I'd be sure to tell them how Nori liked me before I made it, or I can tell my future co-workers, whoever. Perfect. You and your darling boyfriend exchange more sweet smooches, cuddly, and adoring to a degree that would certainly be embarrassing to outsiders if there were any around. And then a swooping sound snatched your attention away from Derek, and the sliding door had been open. The youngest son skipped in as if he invited, and the middle child followed after. George was less cheeky, but equally unrepentant. Hi Derek, hi Nori. Hello, what's going on? Derek flung his head back in a groan. He let go of you with all the begrudging frustration of a teenage boy caught canoodling under the bleachers by a teacher. Not again. Every damn time. There's no privacy anywhere, even in my own house. Hey. Nicholas handled the childish display with unearned airs of maturity. His poise was tall and he cut an accusing finger through the air. You're the one who invited us over. If you wanted to be alone with Nora, why didn't you throw a party with several other people? That was a strong point. Worse still for Derek. George had an even better one. Honestly, confused by his big brother's reaction, he plainly stated a key consideration. This whole side of the apartment is glass. We could see everything happening without opening the door. Coming over feels more polite to me than watching from the inside. At that, Derek snorted a laugh. He was less ashamed of what you were doing than Nicholas was for interrupting it. Fine, it made sense to get together one more time before she left, but I'm regretting being so reasonable now. One of these days, we might learn to be more self-centered, then you'll be sorry. What's that supposed to mean? Sorry. I kind of doubt that. The part, that part about you ever being selfish, not us being over, not us being sorry over it. Yeah, sorry, bro. That's not happening. You shook your head in amusement. You sighed. George, Nicholas, that's that's not right. You could have at least knocked. I forgot how much of a problem this kind of thing was. No, I'm with I'm with Derek. Party's over. Everyone go home. You teased. Aw, don't be mad, Derek. I'm having I'm happy having George and Nicola. 
Um. Uh, we're gonna say no. I'm. I'm with Derek. Party's over. Everyone go home. Yeah, that sounds like a plan. We're sorry, Derek. Annoying. That couldn't be the end of it. Trouble came in threes. Your own sibling appeared from behind. She leaned against the doorway, leering at the same. Romancing out in the open while all your siblings and parents are right there. I had no idea you two were so in indulgent. One rotten apple spoiled the rest. Nicholas and George had originally barged in with the pure intention of being with you. And now they were snickering over Liz's jabs at your and Derek's expense. You stared silently. This could not get any more. You rolled your eyes. All we wanted was some peace and quiet. You lamented. Sorry, we couldn't babysit you this whole time, Liz. You equipped. I'm a bad influence on him. I think it's a good kind of bad influence. Of course this happened. Why expect anything else? That's what Derek's wearily lifted brow seemed to express. You know, you were just talking about how self-absorbed I am and how it's not enough in my own opinion. From even further in the house, Mrs. Sarah's waved a hand popped up over your sister's head. It's okay, we're fine on our own. Enjoy your time together. Your parents were bursting with laughter and effectively trying to model that staying quiet would have been less obtrusive than joining the situation. But really, Dad, your trouble estimate were proven to be highly underestimated. It didn't come in three, it came in in many amounts as physically possible. Mrs. Saras came to get her husband, clearly clearing a path through Liz, George, and Nicholas. Excuse me. Excuse us. She escorted him back to the couch without a fuss. But no amount of cordialness on her end could smooth out this three-ring circus. Derek barely saw the retreating forms of his abashed parents or your giggling moms or even the set of siblings watching and waiting for what would happen next. His arms were folded and his brain was working. You and he had become the center of the universe and that wouldn't do. In the end, Mr. Reliable himself went for his oldest, most reliable solution to awkward situations. Hey, look over there. What? All the others were cl clearly distracted by Derek's fantastic boy. Said mastermind slid near you and whispered intently, run. You nodded to everyone, but Derek was, fo was focused, was set entirely on seeing that gesture. You both knew what you had done. Your hand found his and his and yours without tearing your eyes from the target and escape route out the front. You dashed to the opening left by Mrs. Sara's, speeding by Liz before she could block the way again. The elders were so shocked and younger ones were shouting, but you didn't stop. Through the gap in the sliding glass door, past the couches, and out to the apartment entrance, you and Derek ditched the whole party in a blink. Together you flew down the steps. There was no patience to wait for an elevator. Once on ground- I'll be dead, girl, I'll be dead. Once on ground level, you exploded through the last sets of doors in your paths and onto the sidewalk, leaving laughter. I don't know what that said. You may have escaped the building, but who knew if they'd follow you out, that wasn't something you'd put past your siblings. The hand gripping yours was still tight. Derek encouraged you along, beaming wide. Let's go. You grinned at him sweetly. Let's go. You jokingly mimicked. Okay, make sure you keep up. Yep. Yeah, let's grin. Friends, lovers, partners, and crimes, no matter the circumstance, you and Derek were always a team, and together you were unstoppable. And Derek's bright eyes 